let's dive right into it. Welcome to another edition of Webinar Wednesday. This is the first one in March. We've had a great set of webinars so far this year in 2020. Um, it's great to see so many people working on their sites and their projects and businesses. So today we have some good updates to share with you today that will hopefully make uh, your lives and jobs a little bit easier on the platform. If this is your first time joining us today, welcome. I am Jason there on the left, and we're lucky to be joined by David Rockland, the digital strategist here at Brilliant Directories. David, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Of course, glad to be here as usual. Uh, we've got some really interesting updates and a few really cool tips to show you this week. And I always like to mention, if you're not part of our Facebook group, you can head on over to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook and hit the join button. It's a great place to continue the conversations in between webinars. And again, it's really nice to see, you know, website and directory website owners helping each other and collaborating to provide assistance and guidance and a helping hand because everyone is growing their communities together. So uh, if you haven't already done so, please join us there. You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. And I always like to mention for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. It really is great to be with you guys here today. Webinar Wednesday is really a great platform and channel for us to talk about ways to grow our communities. You know, launching a website is really easy these days. There's tools. You could just turn something on in a few minutes. But growing a community does require some strategy. Uh, so some topics we like to cover are how to increase traffic, I convert visitors into members. One of my favorites is how to improve your website's navigation uh, to provide a clear and concise path and journey for visitors and potential members uh, to follow. So if you have questions uh, or if you want to start a discussion about something on these topics, uh, please save them. We'll try to get to as many questions at the end of the webinar. All right, so we have um, some actually really useful lab updates to share. Uh, with you today. Before I dive into uh, this list, uh, if you are interested in learning about uh, the frequent updates Brilliant Directories is pushing, uh, you can always head to our blog. And over here, uh, there is a category on the right-hand side. It's called Monthly Change Log. I'll actually share a link in the chat for everyone. Uh, so we have February's change log here, and you can go month by month to see uh, some of the noteworthy uh, and important changes that have been made. Uh, most of these are happening behind the scenes. Uh, you don't need to worry too much on them, but if you are a developer or making technical changes to your site frequently, uh, it's nice to check in here and see what the team's been working on uh, and see if there's something that you now want to uh, start taking advantage of. So yeah, these are all the updates from February. Let's see how many there were total. So over 100 feature enhancements to the software just in February. Yeah, we post these updates in the blog typically the first week of every month. And then you can also find uh, direct links to these update posts in the admin dashboard as well when you log into your website. That's right. Let's actually take a look at that together. Um, yeah, here on the dashboard, uh, there is like a uh, need help. So you can type uh, keywords here and it should uh, recommend some articles. Um, and then also here on the right-hand side is the monthly change log. If you ever want to quick links to there, you can find them here in the dashboard. All right, so big update uh, that I want to start with today is in the admin area in the text editor, you can now add tables and rows uh, to your content pages. So we're going to, this is actually part of the tip of the week today. So um, we'll cover that a bit later, adding tables and rows to uh, your static pages so you can really create nicer landing pages and organize your content a, a lot nicer. So because we'll, that's the tip of the week, I'll show examples of that later. Uh, this one's really helpful, especially if you're going to be deleting uh, a group of members that might potentially already have some posts. Maybe they published events or articles on your site. There is now a bulk action, so you can change the post author. Maybe you want to assign those to yourself for whatever reason. Maybe you're moving posts from a staff member that's no longer with you. Uh, so you can now bulk move the ownership of those posts. And then if you're using the multi-member manager add-on where you can have a parent member that has sub-accounts, you can now do a bulk action to change uh, who the parent owner of that is or create uh, remove the association. So let me show you uh, this one real quick. So if we go to search members, 
And I'll just arbitrarily just select this, this first set of members. Let's say I'm about to delete them or, or for some reason I need to move their post. Under the bulk actions here, uh, you can change the post ownership. And if you click that and then click apply, uh, you'll, you can then search for the member that you want to apply the new ownership to. So um, I think that's pretty straightforward and you guys have the ability to do that now. In addition to that, so we can see here that this site, the sample site here, is using the parent and sub-account associations. For example, this sample member has a parent account. Member number one is the parent of this. If you wanted to change that association, you can change the parent member. Hit apply, and then the same way, you can just search for the new parent member to assign, and they'll be the one who manages those accounts. So if you need to do bulk actions now for these things, before you'd have to go one by one uh, and make those changes. And actually, in fact, there was no way, no easy way actually to change the post author. So now you have that capability here. Also, you can remove the parent association also. So there would be no parent account uh, attributed to to these members anymore if you want to do that as well. All right, uh, this one has been requested in the Facebook group. Now we use star icons when writing a review. Uh, this was something that was coming soon in the last webinar and since been released. So uh, if you're going to write a review for a member, as we can see here, um, very simply now it uses stars instead of those circle radio buttons that we used to see. So the aesthetic is a bit better and your site should look a bit more developed. Um, as long as you don't have this widget customized, I think only a, a developer would customize this widget, but uh, you should have this update straight away. This was also, um, we've the next one here, we've created more settings for the advanced post moderation add-on. Actually, this request was, was immediately asked for uh, the moment we release this add-on. And with the advanced post moderation add-on, so with this, uh, you can decide which post types, for example, if it's going to be coupons or events, um, if the member gets to choose if the post is published or not, or if the admin needs to moderate all posts um, that are being published, or just automatically publish all posts, don't give uh, the member the choice. So um, with this, it was really nice. You could choose on a per post type, so per like if it's an event or coupon or blog article. But the request was, can we have this on a per membership level? So maybe higher tiered members, there is no moderation. Lower tiered members, there is moderation. And now you have the ability to do that. And let me show you where you would edit that. So first, let me show you where the existing settings were. So if we wanted to edit, for example, member articles, uh, we'd come here to uh, edit the post type for member articles under additional settings. Um, there is an option here for post approval and we could choose member controls publish status, admin moderates all posts or auto publish all posts. So um, this would apply to all membership levels for this post type. With this update that we've done, now if you go to edit a membership plan, let's do the basic one as an example. And if we head on over to post publishing, actually now here, there's a drop down, and these are the post moderation settings. You can, by default for everyone, since this is new, it's gonna use the rule from the post setting, so it's gonna fall back to whatever the rule you've set for the post type, or you can override that rule for this membership level and then select if you want to change the logic of this. So member controls, publish status, admin moderates, or auto publish all posts. So I know a lot of people wanted this additional layer of control, and the good news is uh, now you have it here with this. Okay, this next one, I put a phase one here for tracking form submissions. This one's been highly recommended um, and asked for as well. Basically, we want to know which members have filled out which forms. Have they completed their listing details? Have they published an event post? Have they filled out maybe a custom form that we filled out on the site? I put phase one here because we are rolling this out uh, in a couple phases. The first one is um, we're just going to make this available in the activity tracker. 
So if we go to the dashboard and go to activity tracker, you'll be able to see in this example site, uh, you know, this member filled out the about form, uh, their contact details form. So this is nice, but it's not really usable at this point. Phase two, which now this is launched and we'll be working on now, is when you go to members to search members, we are going to add additional filters here so you can search for which members have filled out a certain form or have not filled out a certain form on your site. So then you'll be able to find out which members basically have done certain actions on your site or haven't done certain actions on your site with, with respect to the forms they've been filling out and submitting on your site. And then, of course, from that, you can create export lists um, and do more with that. So. Um, it's, I think it's going to be very high value to have that information, and we hope to have that out to you guys soon. But for now, you, you can track members, uh, the form submissions in the activity tracker. All right, and then one more thing for uh, the parent and sub-account association. I kind of showed this in the previous webinars, uh, but let me just show you a bit more. We added an additional layer here. So, of course, if a member is a sub-account of a master parent account, uh, it will note that here. So, if the parent account is member one. So, you can click on this now. And what that does here, look in the top left, it's doing a search for that member's ID with the, the hashtag and the number one. It's member ID one. So, it's going to show us all the sub-accounts associated with member ID one. So, member ID one. And then the last one, we can see the parent account right here. This is member ID one. And this guy's got four sub accounts associated with him. So we can actually see the number and it is clickable and it'll do the same type of search here. So um, this again, this is helpful and ties in well if, if you're using this on your site and then um, using it with the bulk action now if you need to change the parent association. All right, some fun things coming up. I want to give a shout out to Ryan. He's on the webinar here today. He had recommended uh, an update to the detect visitor location add-on that we have. And we do have a demo of that for you guys now. When you're using the detect visitor location add-on, no matter what, when the visitor comes to the site, they immediately get an alert saying, hey, do you want to share your location? It works fine, but it's a little intrusive, especially if someone's visiting your site for the first time, to be greeted with an alert to share their location. So um, what, what the recommendation was in the location search fields here, and this is pretty standard on, on a few other sites, there is a target icon here. And when you click this target icon is when you're going to get prompted to share the location. So... It's filled out the location there. I'm located here in Beverly Hills, Los Angeles. So that, that's working as it should. Now, not only is the benefit that it's, it's less intrusive to the member, who's, to the person who's probably visiting your site for the first time, but also if, if your site is just prompting everyone to share their location and they click yes, that is a ping to your Google Locations API. You know, most sites don't need to worry about it, but, you know, Google has started charging for really power users that are using that. So if that's been a concern for you or uh, the cost has been, you know, not fun to receive that, you know, 20 or $30 a month bill, uh, this will help uh, minimize and mitigate wasteful uh, pings to Google's location API. So uh, that should be released shortly as well. This is a great add-on that's coming out soon. Uh, we are providing um, everyone with the ability to manually send payment reminders to their members and also pass due email reminders. What we're creating as an add-on are automated settings. So you can choose the number of days to send a payment reminder email to your members who are on recurring subscriptions and also automated pass due emails up to three different pass due emails. So maybe on day one that they're past due, they get an email, and then four days later, and then eight days later. And then you as the admin will also get a daily summary of all the members that have upcoming payments, have had past due payments. So you're going to get a better view of exactly what's happening on your site financially with respect to the recurring subscriptions on your site. So um, that should help everyone stay a little bit better 
on top of their finances with their uh, recurring subscriptions. And this last one here, utilizing a pop-up or newsletter registrations, it's not just for design and aesthetic, it actually will help uh, mitigate unwanted spam submissions to your newsletter forms. And I do have an example of that here as well. So currently in your footer, you have the, the email form. Um, so what, what's gonna happen is, and, and we've tested it, it's already reduced a lot of spam coming through sites. In your sidebar and your, and your footer, when you click on the button, you'll be prompted with uh, the join our newsletter pop-up. So it's very similar to how some of the other forms on the site work on your BD site. And what's really nice is you can now choose to collect more information. You're not just limited to the single email address. And also an issue in the footer is there was no real space to aesthetically add the recapture. And also if you're using GDPR consent checkboxes, again, that's really difficult to get that aesthetic nicely um, placed here in the footer. So uh, this will be rolled out soon. And again, because we're asking people to definitely fill out the recapture, it will help minimize and uh, reduce unwanted spam inquiries to your newsletter forms as well. All right, that was a mouthful. And again, a lot of things coming at you. Lots to digest there, lots of good stuff. And again, thank you to everyone. Most of these updates are from your recommendations. So it's nice that the community is really participating to make the software stronger and better for everyone. All right, um, Dave, I'll pass it to you a little bit and uh, we could take it away with the tip of the week. Yeah, so one of the pretty major pain points for a lot of new users who had no experience with uh, web design or web development was when it came to creating static web pages or landing pages. It was relatively easy to add some basic text and images, but to actually get it stylized and looking really nice, uh, it was difficult to do without knowing any HTML or CSS. Uh, so with some of the recent updates we've done to the text editor, it's now easier than ever to build a, uh, a, a really good looking static web page utilizing some of the new tools that we've implemented into the text editor as well as a, a new table feature that allows you to insert tables into static web pages. This might sound simple, but it can really open up the doorways for you in terms of uh, the possibilities that you have when creating static web pages now. Yeah, and actually, David set up a page for us, and I'm going to help recreate that page. I think it's, it's better to just show, show you guys uh, what we're referring to, and then we can cover some how-to steps on how to achieve this type of aesthetic. So Dave, tell us about this kind of example page we created and some of the elements on it, and then we can go into recreating them. Yeah, so like I mentioned, this is just a static web page. A static web page can be used as a landing page if you're directing ads to it. Uh, it could be used as uh, just a general information page uh, that you link to maybe in the, the main menu of your website, maybe provide some additional information about your website, what you offer, some benefits about the membership that, that uh, you provide. So this, at first glance, looks like it may be a home page. Uh, there's a new tool that allows you to create a hero section, which is this big top area in the at the top of the page with the big image that takes up the full width and then the text on top of it. We covered it in webinar, I believe it was 78, um, was where we covered this uh, this update. But uh, so that's on the page. You can create it really easily. There's a, uh, there's a tool in the right-hand sidebar when you're editing static web pages. Uh, so that's there for you to create that element. And then farther on down that page, uh, we utilize tables to actually add additional information and stylize it uh, pretty nicely in, a, in an aesthetically pleasing way. So this first table that we have, it's a really simple table of one row with three columns. And in each column, we have an icon as well as some additional text. So this is a great way to uh, feature some, uh, some benefits of your website that, that you provide. Below that, we have uh, some image side by side with the text. It sounds and it looks pretty simple, but it was one of those things that was somewhat difficult to achieve before. Again, if you didn't know HTML or CSS. Now with the new updates that we've implemented into the text editor, it's easier than ever to achieve that without needing to know any code. 
Below that, similar concept, but we've uh, embedded a form into this page. So uh, one of the cool things is you can embed any form or widget into any of the static web pages that you have on your site. Uh, we'll show how to do that a little later on, but that's a great way to um, attract some uh, additional information from either just new website visitors or maybe your members as well, uh, depending on what the purpose of the page is. Uh, below that, we just have, uh, again, some simple text side by side with an image, as well as a join now button. So this doesn't necessarily need to be a join now button. It could be a call to action for anything, whether it's um, downloading a, a PDF that you're providing for free, uh, a registration button to get new people to register, a, a button to uh, to sign up for your newsletter. It can really be used uh, for anything, but all of this was done without knowing any code, whether that's HTML or CSS, it's all done through the front end uh, text editor. And I think the, the easiest way to kind of cover this is uh, just kind of sh recreate this page uh, with you guys and show you what we've done here. Obviously the tool, I think it's a very simple tool, but again, it's, it's very high value um, what it can deliver with regards to uh, a layout like this. Um, and if you combine this with you know, high quality images or icons, um, it'll just create a much more professional look and feel on your site if you're trying to create uh, landing pages. So yeah, David did mention, we did cover how to create this hero section uh, in webinar 78. Uh, it's at seven minutes and 11 seconds uh, on how to create the, the hero section. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. Uh, but Dave, let's go into the, the admin area here. And we'll go under edit web pages. And we created the sample page here uh, about sample. And let's see what we've done here. So uh, we can see the editor here. Um, we have our first row of three features listed, uh, some text with an icon on the right, uh, some uh, uh, image on the left, and then some text. And you'll notice here we're using uh, the form short code. So it's form equals contact form. And I'll show you guys where I grabbed that. And in addition, um, there's another one. This is some text with a smaller image here. So what's really nice is you can add images. It could be even, or you can have a larger image with smaller text. So we'll cover some of this stuff here uh, today. Uh, the hero section options are here on the right-hand side. So it'll take your title, and then uh, you can enable the hero section. I'll just cover some basic things. You can choose your font size, colors, boldness, alignment, uh, the text width, like how much of the surface of the image it's going to cover. I usually think 50% is nice. Uh, some additional text and, of course, the image that we're going uh, to be using here. Here's a tip for everyone. Sometimes uh, we forget about this. Try to add top padding and bottom padding uh, to this. It will allow, well, it depends on really the aesthetic you're looking for, but it will, in my opinion, if you're using a nice image, um, it's nice to show as much of that nice image as possible, or you can go the opposite way and make the padding as small as you need it to if you're just looking for a very slim banner at the top of the page. But this is where you'll control the hero section uh, here in the right-hand side. All right, Dave, so let's just do something simple. Let's actually recreate this, David, but uh, maybe we'll do four uh, items in a row. So. Um, this is what's new here, everyone, is this tape insert table icon. So we can click on insert table, and then we can choose, I'll just choose a one by four. So I like to work with one row at a time, um, just a lot easier. If I need another row, usually I'll just create a new table for it, but it just depends on your preference. Um, so first thing we want to do is let's add uh, the image. So we have these images here. Uh, you can click on the insert image uh, link here and choose from your gallery. And you can choose some things you like. Personally, um, what I like to do is I actually like to click on the blue upload image thing. If, if you have a lot of images on your site, when you go this way, you can actually filter to search the image by its name. Um, in this case, we don't have too many images, but um, if you did, um, I, I usually like that. This method, and what you can do is right click on the image, copy the URL. And now that I've gotten it, I will close this. And what you can do instead is uh, then click here and just 
put the URL here and insert it. So we have an image here now. So it just depends what you're comfortable, uh, what method you're comfortable grabbing the image. And then what's really nice with the images is you can set like a maximum width. You don't want it too big. So Dave, we'll set this one to 100 pixels and we'll just update it. So just to save time, I'll use the same image, but you can certainly repeat this with different images. So we can copy this here and here and here and here. And <clears throat> with these, you just wanna make sure that if there's extra spaces underneath the image, if you want them to line up, just to check that. So that's kind of like something you wanna check for if they're not lining up. Uh, Cause what, what it's doing is there is an alignment, like a vertical alignment. So it could be vertically aligned bottom or top. And that's gonna be important when we start adding text. In this case also, I want this one to be centered. So we have uh, alignment options here. So we could center this image. So now we have our images centered and I'll add some text. I'll just copy what I have before. This is a, I'll put benefit. And what we can do, David, is uh, something nice. We can just make the font size bigger here. And again, we can, uh, I guess we could just copy everything here. And if it's finicky, again, just look for those extra spaces that are in different places. I guess I copied the image when I clicked copy. So I'll just delete this and go there and we can delete this. So let's actually just save the changes here, David. And give this a look. So that's nice, we have it, we have it there. If we need to add space on top, we can probably do that, uh, put it right above the image. Okay, then we can save the changes. Okay, great, so in this example, we've put uh, four images now. These could be testimonials, they could be benefits for joining your site, uh, they could be lots of uh, different things. So you guys can decide what you would want to uh, use this stuff for. All right, now, uh, this is a pretty common one. It's basically text uh, with an image on the right or left-hand side. Uh, this is probably one of the simpler ones to recreate. And uh, let's scroll down here and we can have some fun uh, just recreating this one. So. Uh, let's click on table and this one we're just going to do a one by two and I'll just copy this image here since I have it but you can go and use the method that you're comfortable with adding an image to here so we've added the image and then we can add text so this is title text about joining our site and I want this to be a title so I can choose uh, the paragraph here and we'll do heading two and we'll go to the next line and this can be some additional text. Just repeat this a couple times. And we'll do this in uh, two paragraphs. Okay. Um, let's save that. So this is like a perfect 50-50 split here. I didn't adjust the width in the middle. Okay, and let's refresh. This is the new one I've added here. This is some text about joining our site. And now we have a 50-50 split. What's really nice is when you have the picture, the image on the right, and then if you scroll down, the next blurb, the image is on the left and you do that about three or four times, it's really nice for highlighting uh, the, the message you're trying to get across about a certain feature or a benefit that the landing page is addressing. And in this example, let's actually just make this font size a bit larger. That's what the back button is for. Okay, let's go back to a large font and bold. That's what we want. Okay, very nice. Okay, now um, 
Let me show you one more thing about the text alignment in these cells. So right now this is vertically aligned uh, middle, but let me just show you if we align it to the top, what that does. As we can see here, it's perfectly in the middle with the image. And if we refresh this, now it's kind of the text starts at the top of the image. So um, again, you can decide where you want to position an image or text relative to each other uh, when you have columns side by side. Okay, let's go to this one, which I think is super important if you're creating a landing page, uh, which is the form. Um, so in this case, it's going to follow the same model. And actually, I'm not going to do much change. Let's keep this that I created here. And what I'm going to do instead is copy this text and put it uh, under the image here. Now, let's go grab a form and put it here. So how do we insert a form here? Uh, but let's say we wanted to do our contact us form. So uh, easy thing to do is go to your form manager and you'll have some default forms there. So you can look for a website, contact us form. So let's see here. And uh, whether you have it customized or not, but basically what you want to take is the, the system name. So system name is contact form. And I can just come here and open bracket form equals contact form. Just make sure there's no, and then close the bracket. And this will now render uh, the website's contact form there. So let's go ahead and save those changes. So that will replace uh, this one here. Great, so now we have a title, uh, we have an image, we have the additional text underneath it. So these could be, they can even be bullet points. It doesn't have to be a paragraph. So. Uh, really, you have a lot of control over how you want this uh, to display. And I think you can even do one more thing. Um, let me check it out here. I think you can actually, if we want to fill this cell with a background color, let's just put a light gray. Let's see what that looks like. So you can actually fill the cells with different colors using the cell background color. Yeah, so again, if for beginners, if you're not going to go into the HTML and the code with the do CSS stuff, this is a quick and easy way to kind of just uh, create uh, some elements on a landing page for yourself. Yeah, I think a good way to think about the text editor now is that previously it was it was just a very basic uh, text editor. Now with some of the additional tools we've added, it works very much the same way as something like um, Microsoft Word or Google Docs with the additional um, color tools, the columns, uh, everything like that. So it's a lot easier now to format pages nicely. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, I think these are some really beautiful things to do. Um, probably if you play around with it more, uh, you'll get more comfortable with it and you'll be able to align things a bit easier. Um, the last one here, if we scroll down, some text with an image here and then the join button. Let's actually recreate this one, David, all together. It should be pretty quick as well. So if we scroll down here. Okay, so this is the module we had. So again, this was, let me just add some spaces here. Again, you can do a lot with just two columns, with text or image, text on the left, image on the right. Let's actually reverse this. Let's copy this image here again. And let's actually just copy this text here. Pop it in here. Okay, great. So this is an example where we actually drag the cell to the left, which shrunk the image and gave a little bit more weight to, more width to uh, the text. So maybe you don't need a large image, you just need a small graphic there. And obviously, uh, it'll extend the, it'll give more width to the text. So you're not, you're going to have less lines of uh, character. So, um, and then what we did for the join button is, um, we really didn't want to code a button, so we just Googled or, or went to a site and we just looked for a join button icon and we found this one and, and uploaded it to our images. Uh, so what we can do is I'll just grab it here from the images on this one. So we have the join button and then I centered it. And so this is just an image basically. And then you can link it to wherever you want. Maybe you want to link it to your join page or directly to a checkout page. 
And let me go ahead and insert that link. And actually, let me make that, uh, and that link is, let me edit the link. I want to open it in a new tab. So when they click on it, they go to a new, new uh, page, new tab. And if we refresh this, so here, um, this is the new one we created with the image on the left and a blurb of text and an action button here. And again, we can resize the images very easily. You just drag them. So if we wanted to make this uh, larger or smaller, we could certainly do so. I want to recommend extending it larger than the, the actual size of the image because then it can start showing distorted or blurry. Uh, but smaller than, than the size, uh, than its actual size it actually gives you a crisper look on um, some displays. So that's, that's sometimes a good thing to do as well. And this is now available to you guys. We're gonna let it run in the admin text editor um, just so we can get some feedback, see if there's any quirks we need to work out. And then we'll release it on the front end. So when you're creating a blog article or an event or coupon or some type of post that you're publishing on the front end of your site, you'll also have uh, that table editor available. Uh, so you can do things similar uh, to this with respect to uh, organizing content uh, in rows. And just to recap, we actually didn't go through the slides here, David, but we did make slides. So there's a hero like uh, hero section that you can have to your pages. Uh, you can create rows with several blocks of elements, uh, nicely uh, lined up and perfectly aligned. Uh, you can have text uh, side by side with imagery. You can add forms uh, to your pages very nicely. And again, you can have images there on the left or right. You can add complementary text or bullets or whatever you need as well. And then you can create, uh, you can get a little more creative and have two different elements. We have the table with the two columns on top. We stretched the text width a, a bit wider. And then separately, we added a join button uh, directly below that table. So uh, you can mix and match these elements to create uh, modules that present really well to uh, the visitors of your sites. So uh, that was the tip of the week for today. Dave, thanks for uh, recommending that one. I think it's really high value now that that feature is available and functionality. So uh, what we can do now is pass it over to you guys and we can take a few questions. Uh, we got our good friend, Eric here. How's it going today, Eric? Good, how are you guys doing? Good, good, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks uh, for the updates. I wanted to ask, you know, are you guys going to make the, the the landing page builder, if you will, you know, the static page builder, any more like drop and drag and drop style, or will it always be HTML? As far as right now, I don't think we're going to go in the direct immediately in in the in the short term go in the direction of creating drag and drop. It does require a lot of like resources to get it right. Um, and right now what we're mainly trying to focus on, especially through this year is focusing on the finances uh, that you have. So better billing and better reporting and better collecting of revenue uh, from your members. So what we wanna do is try to provide some of the, the, the most important elements, for example, this one, uh, that will give you a bit more control than the text editor had in the past. But just in the immediate future of formal drag and drop, I don't see it. It could be in the, in, in maybe next year or something like that. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah, but we're yeah. trying to just create some, some simpler tools. However, I am with you. Uh, some of those bells and whistles really do elevate for, further elevate the value of the page. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is let this ride, um, get some feedback from people. Um, and see if there are opportunities to definitely, you know, take your feedback and your suggestions and see if we can improve some of these things into in a phase two or phase three release. Just some feedback. Well, I, I, it's yeah. great. I, I like the updates. I really appreciate it. Um, and awesome. uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, we, you know, we always like your feedback. Uh, so uh, keep sharing in the Facebook group. Uh, we're definitely re receptive and, and listening to for uh, what you guys have as far as ideas. All right, let's see who else has their hand up here. All right, uh, Colette, how are you doing, Colette? Hi, Jason, good and you? Good, good, thank you. Very soon I'm going to need to register for GST. Um, I know you mentioned you were working on, wanting to work on the billing side. Will there be, or is there an easy way of adding GST 
to existing clients' bills, or does one have to do that individually? Yes, you're uh, you're saying for taxes, right? Yes. Yes. So we are we are coming out with an add-on that will uh, will provide uh, um, a, a, a few high-value settings for establishing taxes um, to include in the invoices, and you'll have some options there. In the interim, you can email the support team. Um, I think it's currently it's on a site by site basis upon request. That's why we're trying to convert this into an add on uh, with some helpful settings. Um, I think it's $150 one time. And what they'll do is um, enable uh, some tax settings for you on your site uh, in the interim. And then when the add on is available, anyone who's previously paid that $150, um, if you're not part of the VIP add ons club, you'll, you'll have that add on uh, associated with your site. Um, so you can email support in the interim and just tell them that you need to add taxes uh, to your invoices. Great. And um, when do you think this add-on will be implemented? If I if I had to guess, I'd say the end of April or May um, as an add-on to include taxes. The the billing automation ones that I mentioned earlier, where the emails and the payment reminders will go out. Those payment reminders will include invoices. It won't include the taxes just yet, but it will include an invoice. Uh, that should be ready by the end of this month or at latest uh, by the end of April. So April and May, we'll be seeing um, some more tools for billing, including the, the email reminders and including taxes. Wonderful. Thanks. You are very welcome. All right. And with that, guys, um, we are uh, just about at that time. So I do want to thank everyone for joining us here today. Um, play around with that new uh, table editor uh, option. Create some landing pages. Maybe update your contact us page that comes with your site by default. Um, maybe add an image and some additional text if you like. Um, and then, again, if, if we didn't get to your question here today, please feel free to join us in the Facebook group. You can head on over to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. The next webinar will be in two weeks. So on behalf of myself, David, and the entire Brilliant Directories family, thank you guys for joining us today. Have a great day and a brilliant week. Take care, guys.